Welcome to this version. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, as Pak said, my name is Deshni van Royen, and I'm here to tell you my story about how I use sarcasm as my weapon of choice in the corporate world. So uh, I had a really cool intro. Uh, I was gonna, I'm going to do it anyway, so please play along. Um, <laughs> so I was going to ask you, like, if you look at me standing up here on stage, you probably all think I'm from India, right? I look Indian. Right? I do. So, but I'm actually not. I'm, uh, I'm South African. <laughs> Thanks, Puck. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm South African and um, I'm of obviously of Indian descent and uh, our family's, I think, four or five generations uh, South African. And if you know anything about the history of South Africa, you will know that uh, we were first, many, many years ago, colonized by the Dutch. And as most of you know, the Dutch are extremely direct and sometimes lean towards the side of being a little bit blunt. And then many years later, we were, after the Dutch, we were colonized by the English, who are the polar opposite. So very polite, very apologetic in how they do things and approach things. So uh, as you can imagine, these two polarizing uh, traits or behaviors has been passed on generation after generation to every single South African. And I basically blame the Dutch and the English for my sarcastic behavior and my uh, sarcastic personality. Um, so I, I think what I'd like to say is sarcasm works for me because it's in my DNA. It's who I am. It's authentic. It's, it's real. It's, it's me. When I... Uh, interact with people, it's not fake behavior, it's just how I am and I can't help it. Uh, I think I do it more with my husband, I'm a lot more sarcastic with him uh, than I am with my colleagues and uh, my friends or my family, but it's just who I am and it's how I do things. And I think people see this as genuine and they see that it's trusted behavior, it's not pretense, it's not fake, it's not adapted to the person I'm talking to. So they feel a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more open to, to be genuine themselves and be authentic themselves. Um, so like I said, I have been in corporate for, I think, over 14 years now, and uh, I've had many roles in many big multinational companies. And the thing you learn about corporate is the culture is really hard. Um, it's pressurized, it's deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. It's run by extremely ambitious people with massive egos, and they just want you to get stuff done. And they don't care how, but it needs to happen. And they forget that it's actually people at the end of the day that are running the show. Um, you know, people have good days and then they're performing at their best. They have bad days most of the time, but bad days, which, uh, you know, brings them down a little bit. And you've got you to gotta adapt to their behavior and you've got to adapt to those people that you're working with. And uh, in my role, I, uh, as, a, as a senior, senior person in, uh, in Philips and other organizations, this is not a Philips talk, by the way, um, I have to manage people and lead a lot of teams, and it's very cross-functional. So many people from different departments, m many other projects that they're running, and I have to keep them motivated, focused, and wanting, and have to deliver on these projects that we are running. And I think, you know, if you picture this, so it's these tall, high-rise buildings, glass, metal, you can't really see in. Uh, you step into the building, it's these millions of stark, boring, dull meeting rooms, no inspiration, no creativity. You walk in, you have uh, a white table, uh, chairs that are broken, and constantly you have to adjust it to your height and your comfort. You have uh, whiteboards with pa uh, parkers or markers that don't work, so you try to write on it and then there's nothing. Uh, you know, you've got this kind of environment every day. You walk into one, you walk with a lot of people, you step out, you go into another one, and that's your day. And then I come in, into my project teams. Uh, I'm very loud. You might have gathered that a little bit by now. Uh, I speak really fast. And uh, I tend to, especially in a project that I walk into, and there's some chaos, something has happened, we haven't, we're not going to meet the deadline we've planned for, 
And I walk in, and normally I'm looking for divine intervention, so not to offend, but I call on Jesus a lot. And I uh, tend to say, like, Jesus Christ, how on earth did we get in this situation? How did we miss this deadline? And I've noticed over, over the years, uh, especially now, the team's kind of adapted to this, and their response is, well, uh, Jesus declined the meeting. He has, <laughs> he has absolutely no idea what we are all doing here. So uh, maybe instead of calling on him, uh, for example, call the agency and you could speak to them and see if they can uh, you know, turn something around and help us out. So I think for me, the, the benefit of being sarcastic is one, it's genuine, so people know it's me. Two, it really sets a different tone. It sets a very almost playful, uh, open tone with the team, and they know that when they work with me, and I, and I hope they know this, that um, they can be also be real, and they can also just be themselves, and they can approach things in a more uh, collaborative way, and they're not going to be taken out for, you, you did something wrong. It's more about, well, how did we get here? How, you know, what are the issues? Where can I help? So the tone is really different compared to, to the rest of these corporate, uh, corporate worlds. And the other thing is, uh, it really breaks the ice. You know, suddenly people feel, oh, I can have a little bit of fun, we can laugh a little bit, I can turn to my colleagues and ask for help, I can uh, work as a family, and you don't get that very often, and you start finding solutions that is thought of together by everyone. It's not just one person that has to walk away and try to solve it. You get a real family effect and you get the sense of, oh, we did this together and it actually does work. You know, We deliver the deadlines, we deliver what we need to do, we may have missed a few things, but at the end of the day, the company's still standing, nobody's gotten fired, and we all are ready to move on to the next project. Um, and I think the, the thing, as you learn in life, there's always a fine balance between the positives and the negatives. And I've realized uh, over the years, especially when I was a junior, uh, I lacked a lot of maturity. I don't think I have a lot of it now, but when I was much younger, I really, I had none. And unfortunately, my personality, I'm sarcastic and I'm really impatient. And I've always said that these two traits uh, put together is literally a time bomb waiting to explode. And when I was a brand manager and had to run many projects, and you know, the pressure's even more on you then because you are responsible to get certain parts of it done, I found that when I was sarcastic, I actually offended people. And people took it really personally, and uh, you know, I had to step out many times and profusely apologize and beg for forgiveness and really explain to them that I didn't mean it towards you, it was just the situation. But it's so much harder to build trust again. It's so much harder to get them motivated again and get them in the space of, okay, I'm back in the game, I'm gonna do this with you. It's just, you know, your purpose is to motivate them and keep them going and you actually do the opposite. So the things I've learned uh, out of these 14 years of me uh, being in this world is that sarcasm is great if you use it with respect. You know, you have to understand there's a very fine balance and you can easily cross the line without knowing it. And I think the main message I want to give to you guys or the insight I wanted to share today is do not manage people by sarcasm, but rather use sarcasm to manage the situation and the moment that you're in. And my last call out to you, I think I'm going to be the second one after Walter to ask you to be a rebel, is uh, go out there, be sarcastic. It really, really is a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, go out and try it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>